a lot of them just are not that minded. They're no, they're not on Twitter. They're not on anything like that. Like, you know what I mean? But they'll all come out to see the film, and it's going to be probably, <laughs> it's going to be a complete. When you're talking about the emotional reaction to people that kind of know the story, right? I think the reaction is probably going to be tenfold, maybe, to people who are just getting their eyes open to this for the first time. Yeah. And there's going to be a lot of that, like, and I think there's probably going to be, there might be a lot more anger, and yeah. there's going to be a lot of people asking a lot more questions, and that's one of the great things about it, like. Yeah, and it's something, the whole kind of we still one tag phrase was that that was that was my emotion after, you know, knowing the story myself, it's like, I'm we remember we still one, but you could see it. I could see it on Saturday. You could see it on Sunday. The fucking anger in all the people's faces, yep. and you kind of have to remind them. Remember, we we did we did still win, like you know what I mean. We, you know, and you see to them. That's why you should never fucking bother or fear <laughs> Sevco because you know look at all the advantages they had over us. Um, we Rangers. Now this new club comes along. We've got near the advantages. Why are you feared? Why are you scared? Why even bother with them? You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, I mean, only come though. I never go into these things and think everybody knows who I am and all the story and they're just like here to fucking coronate me or anything like that. Nothing like that. I go there and in every venue you expect that you have to explain who I am and what the thing's about and then judge the film on that basis. Because I think your ego can never be that strong where people can fucking you just automatically assume. I mean, I do... I mean, people... If, I mean, there's people that I've been to football matches with, right? Who... who, who, who who never go, who never see me in anywhere other than a football match, who probably think I'm a massive celebrity on the basis of the people that talk to me in football matches. That really doesn't happen anywhere else. You know mm. what I mean? <laughs> Occasionally I might get somebody <clears throat> stop me or whatever or say, how are you doing? I mean, it's happened two or three times in the last six weeks or But it's not like I'm fucking dodging paparazzi every day or anything. That's shite. But at a football match, because this is the exposure, but even at that, Harper... There's probably only, say, an average, uh, the crowd being 100%, probably 25% of that crowd here even would even know who the fuck I was, never mind, you right. know, the film or anything like that. But it is growing, you know what I mean? It's growing. And that's no, in terms of me, the, 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 the point about it is the story. Oh. And I'll, and I'll exp- I expand in the, in the behind the scenes that I wrote about the, the sort of things that, you know, went on behind the scenes. Not just in the sense that people try to stop the book or threaten me or attack me or anything like that, but in the growing sort of thing that um, has happened to me since this project and the recognition. And I think that um, I've always, the one thing I've always tried to be with people is myself. Like, I can't be false or start acting like the big I am because, you know, people like yourselves and the mates are in me and that wouldn't really stand for three seconds for that kind of stuff. And I think that's kind of what resonates with people, is that I'm willing to talk to people and tell them anything they want. I mean, there's people... I mean, you talk about the Q&As, Jason. I've probably had answered about 50 questions since the Q&As. People nah. saying, you know, ah, but I want to ask this and I want to ask that. And, you know, people can say, oh, for fuck's sake, that must be a nightmare. I tell you, you'd miss it if it was gone. You know what I mean? And that, these are the people who who buy who who, who 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 invest in the film, who buy the books, who listen to the podcast and retweet your stuff and all that kind of thing. So you have to give them everything. You know what I mean? You can't. You possibly can. Now that's not a case of me having to act like that. The reason that I'm able to do it, as Jason alluded to earlier on, is I'm passionate about this because I'm passionate about Celtic, and I seen the injustice our club went through. Guys like us were all roughly the same age, same generation, so we were all kind of growing up in that era and watched our kind of childhoods being destroyed by this whole kind of ethos. And it's something we touched about in the film about, you know, previous to David Murray coming in, the Scottish football was was, was fun and brightly coloured and it was shared around everybody and it was great. And then this dark cloud descended on Scottish football and that's what we peeled the curtain back on. So... You know, you kind of just deal with that kind of stuff. But, yeah, I mean, I'm prepared to go to every venue and, and go in acting like nobody's ever spoke to me, met me, knows who I am, or anything about the film. Because the one thing I wanted to do, me and anything, was make sure that the film spoke for itself. And, you know, I think it does. Yeah. See, I think the point I was trying to get across as well, when I mentioned it, the thing, I've known, I've known you indirectly for 20, 25 years going to Celtic. Yes. Yes. And I've seen you at every venue following Celtic. 
Yeah. And you're a real Celtic supporter. So for some of these guys who have got names on Twitter and they're on Facebook, whatever they're doing, whatever media, mm-hmm. they're sort of peddling the facts. I can't corroborate that they're genuine Celtic supporters. Do you know what I mean? Some of them, I don't know them. I don't know who they are, but I know for a fact that you are a Celtic supporter mm-hmm. and you're a passionate guy that goes everywhere to follow Celtic. You've spent most of your life just obsessed with Celtic. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, you get my vote, you know, because the thing is, you're genuinely doing this for the right reasons. You're not doing it for any sort of other reasons, you know. You're not doing it to further Paul Larkin, which, and I don't put me yard because this is your job now, which is mm-hmm. fine, but it's a labour of love, you know. It's not like you're not, I, I'm maybe not getting across what I'm trying to say, but that. No, no I, I know exactly what you mean. Oh, it's kind of like, mean. you, if you I'm, I myself effectively become the brand, if you like, so therefore Aye. people see me in a different light and judge me and things like that, and it's kind of fine because. If you want to quiz me about Celtic or anything like that, I'll stand there all day because I can talk about that Celtic, Celtic all day, night, whatever. That's kind of what I do. I mean, I've said it in books and podcasts and to anybody who listen, I am at my best with a can of Guinness in one hand and a Celtic story coming out of my mouth in a pub and that's kind of what I like doing and that was what I was able to do on Saturday night with a few people. Um, you know, I, stories know about me. I'm, what I have to do in the film in terms of the small bit about me is to establish who the, who the hell I am and how I got to the story. But the story is what's more important. At the end of the day, if this was a film that was me giving it the big one and here's how great I am and that, people would fucking hate it, and quite really so. Yeah. But, yeah, it's always about the work, you know what I mean? It's always about the content. And um, I just think that, um, you know, in this kind of thing, when you're dealing with people every single day, hundreds of people every single day, if you, if, you, if you give them people time, which I've always believed is the greatest thing you can give anybody is time, then, you know, they'll give you time back when you need them. And so, you're always going to need them in these, in, these as, in these aspects, you know, because as I said on Saturday, one of the best things is about taking on an enemy, this Gargantua and, and like Murray, was that to know you had friends that you didn't even know existed a year before. See, see what bugs me though, right? Just to touch on something Jason was kind of talking about there, right? about you're not doing this to further your own mm. career or anything like that. But why should you know? Why, why should you no, know? I didn't no, I know, I know, I know what you mean, Jason. What I mean, though, but you, you, I've heard people go after Paul before, right, saying, oh, he's made X amount of money here and X, and he's done this and he's done that. And I'm always kind of like, so fuck him. So, even though he hasn't, right? Mm. But I'm like, but, but so fuck him. What, what if he did? Do you know what I mean? I mean, the podcast, we always talk about, we didn't get, we didn't get nothing with this podcast, right? We didn't even have sponsorship, we didn't have anything like that, right? That's mm-hmm. fine. We just do this to talk about Celtic because we love Celtic and we want to talk to each other and we have a crack and we enjoy it, right? But Paul's, what, the, the amount of time that goes into, I mean, I can only imagine the amount of time that goes into writing a book. I know how long it takes me to fucking edit it. So I know, I know how much time goes, must go into it. So, I mean, why should it, why should you not be fucking making a career at this and making a living at it. I mean, what is wrong with get that as well? Why should it be all just about charity? And the charity side of it is fantastic. I mean, I believe you probably raised a few quid at the weekend for charity. Oh, I, but I, there's, there shouldn't sure. be any reason why you shouldn't get any kickback at it either. Like, I don't understand I, that listen, mentality for people. I, I know what you mean. And that, that's kind of what I was touched on with Ja and all that. And then just stick your chest out and be proud of what you do. Um, the, the book sales allowed me to have fucking things I would never have dreamed of. You know I mean? fucking all, all over the place in the last year because of the book sales, you know what I mean? And because, I mean, we were in New York and Dublin and back, Dublin fucking, Dublin mere times in James Corner in the last year, you know what I mean? Just like, and that's what I want. And, and, and um, you know, I'm not going to apologise to anybody for that because if anybody exactly. had done something who who then was able to make money for it, what would they have done? Just put it all in the bank and kept doing me, you know? You know, I came back to New York in 2008 with not a penny in my pocket two years ago um, after the split up in my relationship and stuff like that I basically sat in this house that I'm in right now freezing most of the winter I couldn't afford to be heating on couldn't put a winter jacket on that kind of thing so I'm not going to fucking apologise say well, I actually can afford a wee bit more now and stuff like that I put a fortune into this film and tour and all that kind of thing to get the story out you know I'm not going to make fortunes off this tour or anything like that you know I'm trying to just bring back the money it was spent basically but 
No, I mean I'm not going to. I mean the book. I mean the book sales were absolutely phenomenal, and there, and I love that despite the fact that it was a concerted and active campaign to get the people to you know buy the book, and you know, ev- and it was great because every time because of the relationship I've got with my publisher now, every time specifically Huns would come on Twitter and tell everybody how shite the book was and all that kind of thing, sales would rock it. <laughs> Somebody else would buy it. You know what I mean? And I would I would say to them, you know, I say. You know, at the end of the day, I would say, listen, I'm going out tonight, boys, thanks very much, because you're fucking paying for it. You know <laughs> see, what I mean? see, Paul, I, Paul, see see the book, right? The book's out of publication, isn't it? Yes. Do you know, and I know I'm going to be one of these people now, saying to you, why not? Like, but I'm saying to you, like, say, when you come to Draw Harder, for example, right? When people see this film, they're going to want the book. Who no, never knew about the book? Aye, aye, aye. And I mean, I mean that can be done. Um, the reason why, because the book was only ever going to be out a year, the, the reason at the start of that was that we, in that time there could be stuff added to it and then, mm-hmm. you know, a kind of re-release a year later or whatever and stuff like that. But the book, I can take books to venues and things like that, it's no problem. And there has been some interest in that, but at the end of the day, you, I can't sit and, be, and try and predict success and say, ah, oh, well, you know, we'll keep the book out forever because the film will be so successful that everybody will just buy the book. Can, you know, you can't really be like that. But what I wanted to do was keep the focus on the film. I mean, the audio book was stopped on Friday there. Audio books sell about 100 copies in, in, in the last week because mm. it was stopping, you know. And um, so you just have to try and manage it, you know. Added to the fact that, you know, I'm pretty much, and I, I'll talk I'll talk about this in the behind-the-scenes book, how I'm basically doing most of this on my own. So it's yep. quite hard to manage it all. You know, and so I was like, you know, keep the focus on the film. But certainly for venues, draw or whatever, if the people want books, whatever. Well, Paul, Paul I believe that. I believe, honestly believe, right, majority of a club, along with I've heard your name in passing through hearing me talking about things, right? Yeah. Um, and I think if people are like me, if I go to something like that, I'm automatically, oh, the, guy, the guy writes books, he's got other stuff. Mm. They're going to want to go back and have a look and well, what has he got? Where can I get this? And I think you're going to see a spike in lots of different things. But well, there's I, loads I mean, of things I've been. There's been loads of things discontinued. Is what I'm trying to say. Aye, <laughs> but they'll not be discontinued forever because we'll bring something bigger and better back. But what and you should. But what I mean is, I always think that you get a, you have a, a sort of thing where you feel not not embarrassed, but that you shouldn't be. Like, just trying to get back to my point that there's nothing wrong with you fucking selling those books and making a few quid. Oh no, absolutely, and I mean I was delighted yesterday because that the books that I sold yesterday, you know, that's the only money I made yesterday. Um, that paid for my weekend or my drink and all that kind of thing. So it was fucking great. I mean, on the on the, the Philadelphia uh, premiere, US premiere, um, I've already had a, a, approaches and things about a book signing there and all that kind of thing, and I'm happy to do it because that's my passion anyway. Is the book thing, um, and as I say, I can take. Kind of books to anywhere, but no, I mean, I no, I agree. It's like you know, you you should be if you're selling your wares, you should be proud of your wares, and um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy to do that, and um, I, certainly it's it's actually to be to, to be brutally honest with you, a trade secret. It's very easy to sell books to people that have a drink, have got a drink in them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You just put in an ounce of course on the microphone, and people just go like like that, bang. You know, mm-hmm. you're going to sign it and all that I mean, I actually, when I, I mean, I tell you a story for yesterday, actually, right? I had all these people come up for signed books and all that, and of course, they're chatting away and all that, and blah, 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 and this, I'm so and so on Twitter, this, that, next thing. And I woke up the next game uh, this morning, basically, and I had about eight business cards for people. Mm-hmm. And, and I thought, what the fuck is this? And I realised, as I remembered back the conversations, it was all people saying, listen, you need anything, give me a cone, a call, mm-hmm. a fall, give me a call, you know, that kind of thing. And it's just like, it's what, you know, at the time you're kind of in this whirlwind, you're bemused, it's like, oh, how are you doing, mate? Aye, and then you see faces, you recognise and stuff and whatever. And I mean, it is, it's incredible. But I mean, the, the people, you know, I'm, I'll try and do anything I can for people, whatever they need, you know, in that sense. Um, as I say, we had raffles at the weekend, shelter, got money, but I'm no somebody who likes trumpet and charity and, you know, fucking Bob, Bob Geldof and all these idiots. But, you know, you can use that. You know, you can use the fact that you're going to have 200 people in a venue. You'd be like, listen, 
they could get a turn out of this as well. Exactly, right. You know, that yeah. kind of thing. <clears throat> and um, I've tried to impress that on CACs. It's like, listen, it's a very, very minimal fee that you, you need to cheat.